Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. Isn't it a great day to be here? Woohoo! Yes. How many are ready to worship the Lord? I'd like to invite you to stand up. When we sing, we stand. You may stand if you prefer. You may be seated, stay seated. But uh, let's begin with the prayer. Today is a special day, a special celebration. Let's let's pray and offer our worship to God this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for who you are. We give you glory, Father. We worship your name. We thank you for this special day of celebration coming up on the 4th of July. Pray that you bring to the center of our hearts the meaning of what, what it actually means to be a free people. The people that you set free are free indeed. Yes. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy, Lord. And we pray that you will help us to never take it for granted. Thank you for the freedom that we enjoy and the salvation by Jesus and Jesus alone. It is in his name we pray. Amen. 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 How many are ready to worship? Give me up there. You're the God of the city, you're the King of His people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope and the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. There is no light on the ground. There is no light on the ground. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in the city. You're the king of these people, you're the lord of this nation, you are, you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there
Now, this is a new song for us. It's a very upbeat song. It's a great song for today, but it's a new song for us. So we're going to need everybody's help on this one, okay? Let your glory fly, let your glory fly, let your glory fly. Let's do it again. Let your glory fly, let your glory fly, let your glory fly. If my people hungry and pray, turn their sin and their wicked ways. Ooh. Mm-hmm. 
with us today and we'll say a little more about that later in the service uh, appreciate Luis uh, leading our music today he's very familiar with many of you he uh, been here often Dave's out of town Luis uh, is a godly man he's a godly man for several reasons one is he lives in godly Texas and uh, probably most of you know where godly is it's uh, just kind of northwest of Cleburne I used to meet Brother Ken Coleman, the pastor at First Baptist, and he had always introduced himself. He was the only godly preacher in Texas. And I guess uh, Ken is the only godly music man from uh, in Texas. Thank you for all that good day. Let's turn in our Bible this morning to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 33. Psalms is easy to find. Just open your Bible kind of in the middle there, and, and you're pretty close to Psalms, Psalms chapter 33. We're going to read uh, these verses of Scripture this morning. Beginning in verse 12. Psalms 33, verse 12. God's word says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind from his dwelling place. He watches all who live on the earth. And then in verse 20, God's word says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Irving Berlin wrote that beautiful song, God Bless America, and, it, and it, it's grown in popularity through the years. And it's, it's popular because of the music, because, but also because of the words. They, they speak to our heart. Uh, another reason of the popularity is the nature of the song. It is a a prayer beseeching God to bless our nation. And it's a, a song that I think stirs in all of us uh, as Christians uh, our heart of, of a love for the Lord. It, it's a prayer that we need to play. We need to pray, God, please bless America. And, and if you're like me, you know, when I come to celebrate this time of year, uh, it, it, there's a lump in my throat as I think about all the ways that God has blessed this great nation, what he's given to us. So let's look first this morning and, and think about, has God blessed America? Has he? Yes. We ought to remember that he's blessed us in so many women, uh, so many ways, uh, because sometimes we don't realize, sometimes we forget about it, and, and we kind of live like maybe spoiled and pampered children. We, we grumble and we complain, and, and uh, sometimes more than we thank the Lord. As I've had an opportunity to travel around the world, uh, especially on mission trips, been to, on mission trips there to share the gospel in places like Russia and China and Cuba and Central America, and uh, I've seen the oppression 
that so many people in our world under, every time I return from those places, being reminded on how blessed we are to live in this wonderful nation. You know, God is, has smiled on this land more than any other. Our, our blessing are, is as the sand in the, in the seashore. This, we've been blessed in, from, with so many material and, and spiritual things that we be, we, sometimes we take them for granted. We're, we are the wonder and the envy of the entire world. You, you don't really realize that until you travel around the world and just people see how, how blessed we are and how many people envy us and would like to be Americans. I, I've met in my travels so many outstanding young people, many great Christian young people, and every one of them that I've ever met would just give anything to be able to live in this great nation. In the book, Let's Join the Human Race, it says, in, in terms of food to eat and clothes to wear and houses to live in, the United States is a rich suburb surrounded by slums. And that's the truth, how, how wonderful this great land of ours is. God's blessed America. we got natural resources. We're the breadbasket of the world. He's blessed us with such amazing beauty in our country. He's given us a good government. It's not perfect. Because it's run by people like you and I. But it's, it's the greatest government on the face of, a, of the earth. We've got liberty and freedom and justice and equality. And, and, and these are our American heritage. Yes. We ought to be proud of this form of government. And nothing like in the world. We're a republic that's governed by laws and a, and a government that's designed to protect the rights and the property of our people. A preacher can stand in the pulpit this morning and he can complain about the government. He can complain about the president, the congress, the governors, the city officials. And, I, and he will still be standing in the pulpit next Sunday. A newspaper editor can pick up his pen and write a hot editorial against any phase of the American government. And the next day the presses roll again. But we know that's not true in many places in this world. I was on a mission trip to China, and it was just eye-opening to, to me to see that we could not pray in public uh, in a restaurant. We had to pray with our eyes open, because we, you can't do that. You can't meet together for worship. Those that do, do it in secret in groups of like 12, and do it in fear for their lives. I went to Russia, and supposedly Russia has religious freedom. But, uh, but our, our, one of our missionaries we were with told us just a couple of weeks before a mission group just like ours were playing with children there in the park and sharing the gospel and the Russian authorities, police came and forbid them to do that and broke it up. Our religious freedom is so precious. So where does this religious freedom come in? Why do we have it and so many of the world don't have it? It came out of our Baptist heritage. Roger Williams, a Baptist minister, the founder of Rhode Island Colony believed that a man should have the privilege to believe or not to believe. And when the Constitution was written, Thomas Jefferson was so enamored with this concept, this concept of religious freedom that he wrote it into the Constitution. In America, we all agree that our religious, we don't all agree on our religious beliefs, but we agree that a man has the right to believe or not to believe. And how precious that is in this land that we live in. It's a marvel blessing that we have in America. It's a place where everybody also has a chance. It may be more difficult for some to have an opportunity to, have, uh, to succeed. But if you have initiative and you have uh, the drive to succeed, all around us there are success stories of folks that, that came from really nothing to greatness. So if you give your best, young person, you have a chance in America to reach for the stars. God's blessed us in so many ways, and we need to remember that. We need to be thankful for His blessings. But also, we need to ask, why has God blessed America? Why is it that God blessed America uh, in the past? I, I believe it's because America was founded on a firm belief in Almighty God. America is a nation in which the psalmist wrote here in our passage of Scripture today. It's a nation that was founded on this where it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. 
We're not delivered by our armies. We're not strong because of the rulers we have. But America was a nation founded upon a firm belief in God. God birthed our nation with the sense of a great dependence on God. When Columbus set sail to the new world, he planted a cross on the lead, his lead ship. And the first act he performed when he reached the new world was to plant that cross on the shores of the new world and dedicate this land to God. When the pilgrims in November of 1620 landed in New England's shore on Plymouth Rock, they had under their arms a Bible. And their first public act together was to fall on their knees and offer prayer to Almighty God. Their first public enterprise was building a church in the center of their community. Almost every one of the first 13 colonies had in their constitution that Almighty God founded their state. One year after the Constitutional Congress, they appropriated money so that Bibles could be brought, bought and distributed among the people because they knew that America had been founded as a Christian nation. After the Declaration of Independence, these 13 independent colonies needed to come together and write a constitution. So 13 years later, after independence in Philadelphia, they worked for four long weeks trying to write a constitution. And they weren't able to agree on one single sentence in that, in that four weeks. It was futile. But after four weeks, Benjamin Franklin stood up at 81 years of age and he said, I've lived a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see in this truth that God governs in the affairs of man. Therefore, I move that prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessings upon our deliberation be held in this assembly every morning until our task is completed. They unanimously, unanimously adopted the resolution and began to pray every day. And in a hundred days, they produced our Constitution. And it has stood the test of time longer than any other government now in power. Amen? Amen. They say that you could say that out of the Bible, out of the conviction of belief in God, and literally out of a prayer meeting, our Constitution was hammered out and our nation began to set sail on these great sea of, uh, the great seas of this world. The majority of our early colleges were founded as Christian colleges and universities. For example, John Harvard left a number of rules by which Harvard University was to be guided. And one of them stated this, let every student be plainly instructedly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider that the main ends of life studies are to know God. Jesus Christ, which is eternal life, lies at the foundation of all knowledge and learning. The Lord only gives wisdom. John Harvard, the founder of Harvard University. Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Dartmouth were all founded as religious schools. At one time, 44%, almost half the students at Yale were ministerial students. Roger Babson hit the nail on the head. He wrote, South America was settled by men seeking gold. North America was settled by men seeking God. And the difference today is so apparent. It is out of this spiritual background and this heritage that we come to this anniversary to once again pray to the great God of heaven. God, please bless America. And God has done it. But the real question for us this morning is, will God continue to bless America? Can we count on his providential care in the future? And so, uh, as we conclude today, I want us to think about, will God continue to bless America? We cannot expect the blessings of, um, on America merely because we desire it or because we're Americans. The only way to be certain of God's blessings in the future is for us to fulfill the conditions of His blessing. So the real question is, is not will God bless America. The real question is, are we Americans prepared to do our part? Are we ready to meet the condition of God's blessings? Moses 
said in Deuteronomy to the Hebrews, we can have blessing or cursing depending entirely upon what we do with God. If we follow His ways and His will. So the answer in a real sense is, is in our hands. God's ready to bless us and prosper us and our nation if we fulfill our part. God's not reluctant. If the favors we enjoy are lost, it's not God's fault, it's ours. You know, we've got a custom in America that when a president is sworn in, he takes the Bible and he opens it to a passage of scripture that he chooses and lays his hand on it. One of them is part of the song we sang a while ago, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Boy, that's what we need today, isn't it? We need humility and prayer, a turning from sin, a returning to God, and the result is God will heal our land. Our hand, our land needs healing. He'll forgive our sin. He'll bless us as never before. He'll continue to bless us if we're willing to meet his conditions. America's in trouble. All you gotta do is turn on the news. Uh, there are erosive, destructive forces on the inside of our nation that are seeking to destroy our nation. They're like a cancer eating away at the vital organs of our national life. When we read passages of scripture like Proverbs chapter 14 that says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to all men. Boy there's something that that ought to turn on a red light in, in all of us that realizes that our nation is in deep trouble. We're in a period of great difficulty but there's no problem facing us that a spiritual revival could not resolve. You know, we hear people sometimes throw at us as Christians about separation of church and state. Separation of church and state does not mean that God is to be separated from the government. God's people are to take an active part in the government. If we don't take an active part, we're just leaving it to the pagans. In Gibeon's book, The Rise and the Fall of the Roman Empire, he said there were several reasons why the Roman Empire fell. One was the rapid rise of sexual sin that began to take over the Roman Empire. God's Word says any kind of sexual relations outside of the bonds of a, a marriage between a man and a woman is a sin against Almighty God. Sexual sins are limited, literally dominating our nation. Homosexuality, pornography, all kinds of perversion. Gideon Gibbon says Rome fell because the homes fell and sexual perversion was rampant. A few years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that, that a, a man could marry a man or a woman could marry a woman. But that does not change what God's law says. Listen to, listen to Romans chapter 1. Somebody ever wants to talk to you and argue with you about homosexuality, just remember. It's easy to remember. Remember Romans chapter 1. This is what God says. Because of this, God gave them over to a shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Man committed indecent acts with other men and received in himself the due penalty for their perversions. Young person, I don't care what they tell you in some kind of health class, God says in any relationship between a man and a man and one woman, the word God uses is a perversion. Now, let me hasten to say we are to love the sinner. We're not to, to be angry and mean towards them. We're to love them. You love the sinner, but you hate the sin. Supreme Court may interpret laws but God's law never changes. Listen to what 
Listen to what God's Word said. The prophet Isaiah said, it, he said, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of our God stands forever. God's people said? Amen. That's right. That's right. Another reason Rome died was because of a, a mad craze for pleasure. Pleasure became the God of Rome. And I, I fear that this is the case in America. It, it's good to have leisure. But when it becomes our God, it becomes a danger to man. One man, one day a man said to the famous writer, Voltaire, Mr. Voltaire, do you know God? He said, well, I have a speaking acquaintance. I don't really know him very well. I, I go by church, I tip my hat, but I never go in. And that's the, precisely the view of many today regarding God. They tip their hats, but they never enter into a faith relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It is tragic, but true that many in America, they claim to believe in God. But in reality, they are practicing atheists as far as their daily life and their decisions are concerned. They're lost without hope because they don't know the Lord. He does not sit on the throne of their life. They claim to believe in God, but there's no evidence in their life. Sunday's just another day to them. They're not part of any New Testament biblical church. You see, the scripture says that Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. And you cannot love God and not love the one thing he said he loved. Now, you can deceive yourself, but when you stand before Almighty God, he'll say, you don't know me. There's no evidence in your life that you ever gave your heart to me. You lived your life as if there was no God. America cannot deliberately obey God's moral laws also. Engage in practices that are heinous in his sight. And expect his blessing. We can't do that. We'll go down and ruin, ruin like any other nation before us that forgot God. Study your history books. The place to begin in a national revival is in our own hearts and households. America can't be right until we are right. So we need to ask God to forgive us our sins and rededicate ourselves anew to personal and civic responsibility. We need to pray daily for a spiritual awakening in our country. Will God bless America? Yes and no. Yes, if we fulfill His conditions, humble ourselves, pray, seek God's faith, turn from our wicked ways. We have to rededicate ourselves. And no, if we fail, it's up to us. So, so on this special occasion, as, as we remember our nation's birth and declaration of independence, I want to I want to suggest that we what we really need in order to assure the continual blessing of God is a declaration of dependence. A dependence upon the Lord. Listen to what the, the wise Proverbs says in Proverbs chapter 3. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. I pray that we will daily pray for a spiritual waking in our nation. So the question this morning as we conclude is, have you trusted the Lord? Is there a time, sir, or ma'am, young person, is there a time that you can look back when you ask God to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life and save you? And then there was evidence of that was real by you following the Lord in baptism, becoming a part of a Bible-believing church and living for the Lord and serving Him. And today you're actively involved in the Lord's work. That's the proof from this book that you really meant business when you prayed and invited Him in your life. If you did, then you'll love what He loved. You'll love His Word. You'll love His people. You'll be actively involved in a church that He founded. That's the proof. Well, you say, well, I don't think I believe that. Well... God said it. That settles it. 
whether you believe it or not. And when you stand before the Lord, He's going to say, I gave you my word. I gave you a church where you can hear the gospel. And you lived your life as you pleased. And He will say on that day, depart from me. I never, never, never knew you. Oh, but it's not too late today. Today you still have an opportunity. You have an opportunity today to come and say, I want to ask God to forgive me of my sins. And I want to invite him into my life. This morning, wouldn't you do that today? Let's stand for prayer. Our Father, you know the hearts of those here today. God, you know if there's a man or woman, boy or girl today, that's never given their heart to you. Oh God, help them today to humble themselves and say, I'm a sinner. And I want to give my heart to you. Lord, maybe there's one here today that back there somewhere they did make a decision, but Lord, they drifted far away. Today they don't live for you and serve you. They're a good person. Do a lot of good things. But you're not the center of their life. Oh, today, help them to realize. Life is short. They need to come back to you today and live for you and serve you. Maybe there's a young person here today, or a child, that gave their heart to Jesus during vacation Bible school. You need to come this morning and, and share that with the church and, and follow the Lord in baptism. Whatever God wants you to do this morning, I want you to do His will. I ask you just to bow your heads and pray. Pray this morning. Ask God to pray for our, to bless our nation. Ask Him to have His will. And especially pray this morning for that man or woman, boy or girl here today that's not ready for eternity. That doesn't know for sure that they're son. If they're out of God's will, they're living a life as they please, but not serving you. God pray that today they would come. So would you just keep your eyes bowed and would you pray through this time of decision? And then I'll then come and share it with you as our musicians sing. Would you come right now? Would you come today. You give time. You are alive. So brother you Lord, I'm not really sure. To I don't know for sure. Come and let me show you the Lord of God. How you, you can know the Spirit. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our mouths to be poor. Faithfulness. This is uh, something you can be seated. This is a uh, summertime is always a, a time when a lot of people are out, and then we have a lot of extra expenses. So thank you for your faithfulness, and as uh, you give your tithes to the Lord, God's word says this is Jesus talking. Jesus is talking, and he says in Matthew, "Woe to the teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, dill, 
men and coming, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Jesus was saying to the Pharisees, you guys have your, your financial thing, but you're forgetting justice, mercy, and faithfulness. And then Jesus said, you should tithe. That's important. But you also ought to remember these other things too. And so the Lord's reminded us that we're, we're, all these things are important, justice and mercy, but also we're to support the Lord's work with our time. So thank you for your faithfulness. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Jeff, would you listen to prayer, Father, we thank you this morning for the word which you have given us. And, Father, we do indeed pray for our nation and its healing. For we step further and further away from you continually, and you were the original gifter. Father, so we pray as we approach this holiday season for a restoration, and the move must be upon us to you. Bless the offerings we are about to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
specifically say how much I appreciate Deborah Schimper. Thank you. From the standpoint of uh, uh, those of you that were born here, and I'm not one of you that were born here, I choose to be here. And it is such a privilege and an honor to be a part of this country. Those of you who were born here perhaps don't realize what Brother Royce was talking about. I was born and raised in Brazil back in the 60s and was actually a sponsored child to World Vision. I don't know if you knew that, Brother Royce. Uh, our family was very poor. I, don't, I know I don't look like your typical Latino, but I am Latino. <laughs> There's some white folks down in Latin America, too. It is an honor and a privilege. And even myself, having lived here now for over 30 years, I find myself sometimes taking for granted the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy. Um, they are not free. And I am here today, first and foremost, by the blessing of Almighty God. And second, by the, by the work, I was looking at that box there, that's going to Tanzania. I have been the recipient of these gifts that were sent to Brazil by churches like this one. Amen. And you have no idea how much it means. And, uh, and the meaning of that. I, I know what it means firsthand. So keep doing it. And, and, and I am here today because a little, I'm going to say a little old lady, she wasn't that old at that time, but uh, Juanita Morris, whose name is engraved inside this guitar actually, uh, chose to go to Brazil as a short-term missionary and preach the gospel. Amen. The work that we do here, what you do here, what you put in that box, the works, that, the, the, work, the little bit of money that you send to missions, I'm testimony of all that. And I want you to encourage you to keep doing it. And I'm grateful to God that he has allowed me to choose this nation. I, I joke with people sometimes, I'm more American than you because you were born here. I choose to be here. <laughs> Not sure if that's really true, but it is true, the choosing part. Let's stand to our feet and 
and, and, say, and sing a wonderful song that honors this nation. And this is my first time actually leading the Star Spangled Banner, so this is wonderful. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous tide for the